Hey mystics, welcome to the Pisces full moon energy reading. These energy readings will be an opportunity to look at your project strategy just a little bit closer. They'll also reveal synchronicities along the way. And I'm pulling a few cards for our water sign friends today. That's Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. Today, I'm gonna to start with an angel card from the Angels and Auras Oracle deck to see what message they have to share with you. Then I'm going to share four Oracle cards from my Element Energy Oracle deck. In this reading, we'll apply a business framework tool known as SWOT analysis. SWOT stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, or more softly, challenges. It's a brilliant framework to identify what might block or boost your efforts in launching your new projects. And what a better time to release or launch than the full moon. Known for its energies conducive to culmination and illumination, the full moon is an ideal moment to showcase your hard work and bring your projects to light. Remember, you don't have to have Pisces in your chart to take advantage of this energy. The SWAT framework combined with the current celestial energy provides powerful guidance for planning your new ventures which are applicable to everyone, regardless of your astrological makeup. Now let's go to the desktop to see what the cards reveal for the upcoming month. Welcome, my water sign friends. I want you to think of a project that you want to release or launch this full moon as we go through your cards. This is a general reading, so take what resonates and leave the rest behind. And remember to use your own intuition as we go through this reading together. Today, we're going to pull the one card from the Angels and Oracle deck to set the tone for our SWOT analysis. I've pulled four cards here from my Element Energy Oracle deck, each representing the different part of a SWOT analysis to help set the stage for your project. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats or <laughs> challenges. Okay, lucky for you. Spirit has pulled a card from you from the angel deck, and that is angels are watching over you. The keywords here are supported, protected, loved, and encouraged. So if you're feeling alone right now, if you're feeling abandoned, if you're feeling discouraged, just know that you can call in your angels right now. <laughs> I'm feeling them myself. Call in your angels right now to help support you. Ask for guidance. Ask for specific guidance guidance as well okay it's not just a general hey can you help me but make sure that if you've got something that is nagging you call in your angel specifically to help you with that one thing and then move on to the next and the next so that you can find the light that you are seeking throughout the duration of this project okay the first card that we're going to pull is the strength card uh, this is a beautiful foundation for your project. Love, especially a business founded on love for the work, the clients, and the community can create a strong, positive company culture. This is a way for you to tap into your why, because this is the card that is coming from the Aether aspect. So when we're looking at our greater purpose, our why, right? Any decision that you are making needs to come back to your purpose. That is the eternal flame for your business. All right, so this is a great setup so far. The second card is weakness. This is where we're going to find a potential hurdle and ask our angels to help give us some tips on our next strategy. The second card represents weakness. This is where we're going to learn about potential hurdles that might trip us up during this project. We'll bring in the angels and we'll get tips from them to figure out what is the next right step for you. This card is revenue. Okay, this being in the weakness position, while you love your business right now and you love your customers, be sure that your revenue is on par with your products and your services. What I discover many creatives and mystics alike is that we tend to undercharge and then we're not making any profit. So the revenue is really here to remind you 
to have multiple revenue streams because we don't want to be at the mercy of some kind of market shift. And then suddenly we discover that we are not connecting with the customers that we have built relationships over the last months and years because some kind of shift made us vulnerable in the marketplace. The second thing I want you to do is take another look at your pricing structure. Are you charging enough? If you have a product, make sure that your unit cost, your wholesale cost, and your retail cost are in alignment. Because if you don't have a margin between your wholesale and your retail, then you're gonna need to adjust. Does that mean that you change materials that you're using? Does it mean that you change your best fit customer, right? You may say, oh, well, you know, I wanna make sure that everybody can afford my services. When that happens, then we don't sell to anyone. So make sure that your product and your service is in alignment with the customer that you're trying to reach. Look at that margin. Make sure that that margin is paying your bills, right? Does that mean that you have to sell more of the same product? Or does that mean that you raise your price and sell less of the same product, okay? So take another look at your revenue stream and the way you're pricing your services and products for this project. The third card is opportunity. This is where we get to watch for a lucky chance that could push your project to the next level. That card is self. The advantage here that when you're focusing on self-development, it can improve your leadership qualities and your business acumen, enhancing your overall business performance. This is where I would encourage personal and professional growth among your team, which can lead to more innovative and proactive employees who are capable of driving your business forward. If you don't have any employees, maybe it's a time to do a little bit of self-reflection because here, this is the water cards. And the water card we know is about the relationships with ourselves, our customers, and our partners. And when we are focusing on ourselves, this is a good reminder not to focus on others, but ourselves. Look to ourselves when it comes to the strategy for this project, right? Look for the connection that we are developing with our customers and our partners throughout the duration of this project. If you find yourself in despair, ask your angels and your guides to come in and assist you, to help you if you're feeling discouraged or alone during this project duration. Ask for signs and then look for those signs. Be mindful. Just take a quick moment to stop and recalibrate, stop and recenter, to become aware of those signs that you've asked for from your spirit team. This doesn't have to be a project that you do alone. You can bring in your spirit team to help you with it, okay? The fourth card is in the threat position or the challenge position. Oftentimes when we're creating our projects, we miss blind spots. So what we need to do is take a 360 look, a viewpoint to make sure that we are turning over every rock. In this case, what we're looking for is compassion. With compassion being another water card, we know that water shapes our relationships with ourselves, our customers, and our partners. Sometimes we can be overabundant with our compassion for others. We can be excessive, right? And being excessive may lead to subpar business decisions. We may underperform because we're trying to do everything ourselves or we're undercharging because we wanna make sure that our customer can afford us, right? These decisions may start becoming unpopular for the bottom line and that's not what you want. You don't want your your product to underperform because your compassion outweighs the practicality of your business project, okay? That financial outcome that you are working so hard to develop, let it be the revenue streams or let it be the pricing. A focus 
on compassion over the practicality could impact your profitability and your business viability. And I don't want that to happen for you, okay? So this is a lovely reminder that while your business is founded on love, be sure that your revenue is going to help build your business and build those revenue streams, reaching out to the customers who need you most, who can afford you, and make sure that you are working on your self-development and you're not focusing on compassion over practicality, okay? I know you've got this. Until next time, stay magical.